Good afternoon. We are going to be taking notes on the first section of Unit 8, which is graphing rational fractions. And you're going to need graph paper for the notes today. You're going to need a ruler. You might want more than one color of ink as well. So take a moment, pause the video to get your supplies so that you're ready to go. All right, and almost everything I'm going to show you today is uh, things that we've already learned. We're just going to review them and start to pull multiple things together. So for this first section, we're going to use the example f of x equals x plus 2 times x minus 3 over x plus 2 times x minus 1. And we're going to be finding a number of things, um, also using the grapher. So first things first, we're going to learn the get the zeros. And of course, the zeros of a function are some number a comma zero, where y equals zero. So when you're finding the zeros, you set y equal to zero and you solve for x. So when I do this, this bottom part will multiply out. So I will have zero equals x plus two times x minus three, basically the top equal to zero. It's already factored, so I can solve it and get x is negative two and x is positive three. So my zeros, are negative 2 comma 0 and 3 comma 0. All right, the second item we're going to find is the y-intercept. And all y-intercepts are 0 comma some number b. In the case of rational fractions, you're only ever going to get um, one y-intercept. You will never get more than that. So to get the y-intercept, you set all of the x's equal to 0. So that gives me 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 3, 0 plus 2 times 0 minus 1. Obviously, the 2's cancel out. So you get y equals negative 3 over negative 1, which is 3. So my y-intercept is 0, 3. Okay, the next item we're going to find are the vertical asymptotes. And to find the vertical asymptotes, you need to figure out which values of x will create a zero in the denominator. A zero in the denominator is undefined, and an asymptote marks a value of x that is undefined for the function. In other words, there's no graph for that value of x. So we take the bottom of the function, x plus 2 times x minus 1, set it equal to 0, and solve it. So I get x equals negative 2 and x equals 1. These are actually lines, so they can take that form. So the vertical asymptotes are x is negative 2 and x is positive 1. Now, this is where you want to check for holes. And holes, graph holes, occur when you have the same factor over itself. So looking at our function, we have x plus 2 over x plus 2. So because those are the same factor, they cancel each other out, but negative 2 still makes a 0 in the bottom of the function. So we have a hole in the graph at x equals negative 2. So the minute you see that, you have to go back up to your vertical asymptote, x equals negative 2, and cross it off because it's not a vertical asymptote. So it's a hole. So there's no vertical asymptote there, and there's no 0 there. So those get crossed off because we have a graph hole. Now what's nice is 
if those two cancel each other out, then when it comes time to graph, we can do the simplified form x minus 3 over x minus 1. All right, vertical asymptote. Now we're going to do horizontal asymptote, also called a slant asymptote. And if you remember, there are three rules for this. Um, we used to use the straight up rules, but now we're going to actually use long division because we've learned polynomial long division. So this is new. We're going to use polynomial long division unless it's y equals 0. And if you remember the rule for y equals 0, um, the degree of the top term has to be lower than the degree of the bottom. So given x to the m over x to the n, if m is less than n, then automatically your asymptote is y equals 0, and you do not have to do the long division. As it is, though, we actually do need to do the long division. So we're going to take x minus 1 and divide it into x minus 3. Sometimes this will create a multi-term line, sometimes only a single term. You won't know till you divide. x goes into x one time. 1 times x is x. 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Change the signs. We get y equals 1 plus a negative 2 remainder over the divisor x minus 1. So that is going to be our horizontal asymptote. Now, if the fraction has a number on top but a letter on the bottom, when we graph, we can just disregard it and do y equals 1. When you get to calculus, you will actually do something with that fraction. For pre-calculus, we want you to generate the fraction so that you know how to do that and you've practiced that particular skill. Um, Speaking of which, going back up to zeros, if your zeros aren't nice and pretty and factored, you might have to use polynomial long division. Sorry, not polynomial long division. You will have to use the quadratic formula. So I'm just going to put quadratic formula with the question mark up in there so that you realize that sometimes you're going to get decimal answers for your zeros instead of nice pretty whole numbers and this will take place more often in this unit than it did on previous units. Let me quick erase that. Okay, so we are going to use the information that we have to generate a graph. Remember that your graphs need to be bigger than a post-it. We're also going to combine your graphing with your grapher technology. So there's our nice big, bigger than a post-it grid. Mark your one zero, which is one, two, three, zero. You have a y-intercept at zero, three. You have a vertical asymptote at x equals one. So I'm going to draw that. It's a dashed line. Be sure and label it at the top or the bottom with a box. And we have a slant or horizontal asymptote. Now, y equals 1 is a horizontal number. So in this case, it is actually a horizontal asymptote. At y equals 1. And again, um, you can label it with 1 and the fraction. Just make sure that I can find this little fraction expression on your work or label it clearly on the drawing. All right, so now we're going to need to generate some points, and we're going to be using our grapher. And we're going to generate points that we, we find useful. So this one, for example, we know this curve is going to come up from the bottom and get infinitely close, the question is, how far of a bend does it have in there? So let's go to your grapher, go to the y equals menu, 
And let me grab my other grapher because this one is a little dim today. Let's see if this one will work better. Not much better. Okay, so to input a fraction with, with the whole intact, you have to put both expressions at the top. So to input it, you're going to put the entire top in its own set of parentheses and then each binomial in its own set. So I usually say open the top, so left. Now do the first set, parentheses x plus 2, close x plus 2, open x minus 3, close x minus 3, close the top. Division symbol, now we're going to open the bottom, so left parentheses, and then left parentheses for x plus 2, close it with a right, left parentheses for x minus 1, close it with a right, and then close the bottom. A window of tens is typically sufficient for what we do. Okay, so we need to know how close this graph goes in here. So I'm going to use x equals 2 to get a point off that. Now, if you have this traced in your calculator, you're going to direct substitute the 2 and push enter and the y value will appear automatically. It's a great tool for calculating. So 2, negative 1. So this is a really gentle curve. Comes up, hits those two points, gets infinitely close to the asymptotes without crossing. OK, now I need a couple of points for this curve. I'm thinking negative 1 and negative 3 might be good ones to know. So negative 1 is a 2. Negative 3 is a 1.5. So negative 1 up 2. 1, 2, 3 is a 1.5. Now, I've deliberately skipped x equals negative 2 because that's, that's my whole. So looking at these points that I have, the curve's going to come down. The graph whole will be right about there. And then it will get infinitely close without crossing the asymptote. As far as labels go, you're going to label negative 3 comma 1.5. For a whole, just put an arrow, and you say whole at x equals negative 2. That's your labeling. And then this point was our negative 1 comma 2. So we still label on the graph. You need at least two points for a decent curve unless it's really narrow. And that is the graph of the function. The, if you didn't have technology, the only thing you would need to do is calculate your points from scratch, but this also gives you a way to check your answer. All right, so that's a review of all the skills that we've done. Let's go ahead and do one more example, and then you should have enough of a review to get you through. All right, so our second example is f of x equals 2x minus 1 times x plus 1 over x plus 2. And we're going to do our laundry list here. We're going to find the zeros, the y-intercepts, any vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. And then on your um, homework, uh, you're going to have maximums, minimums, and occasionally end behavior. So we'll go over those as well. OK, and I'm going to go ahead and kind of box off my laundry list. It keeps things tidy, and it also gives me space to work. My graph is going to fit here. And this graph actually ends up going a lot further down than anticipated. So I'm going to go ahead and extend this graph, clear down the page because I know <laughs> what's going to happen. Um, and then I'm going to put the crossbar up here. And that gives us some work here on the right-hand side. All right, so for zeros, uh, you're going to set y equals 0 and solve, which means you're going to take the top, which is 2x minus 1 times x plus 1, set it equal to 0, and solve it. Uh, set 2x minus 1 equal to 0, you get 2x equals 1, so x is 1 half, and of course the second one, x is negative 1. 
So my zeros are 1 half comma 0 and negative 1 comma 0. Okay, next thing we're going to do is the y-intercept. So we're going to set all the x's equal to 0 and solve. So y equals 2 times 0 is 0. So 0 minus 1 times 0 plus 1 over 0 plus 2. So that's going to be negative 1 over 2, negative 1 half. So 0, negative 1 half. OK, vertical asymptote. Set the bottom equal to 0 and solve. So we're going to take x plus 2, set it equal to 0. We get x is negative 2. And that is a line, x equals negative 2. All right, so now we're going to get to horizontal asymptotes. Now I'm going to have an x squared over a single x. So because the top power is bigger than the bottom, it's going to be a slanted line, but I need to figure out what that is. So to figure out what that is, you need to do the long division. This is new. So first thing you need to do is multiply the top together so that you can do division. So 2x minus 1 times x plus 1 is 2x squared plus 2x minus x minus 1. You get 2x squared plus x minus 1. Now that you've got the top multiplied, you can do x plus 2 into 2x squared plus x minus 1. All right, so what times x gives you 2x squared? A 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times 2 is 4x. Multiply everything by a negative 1. The first term adds up to 0, and 1 minus 4 is a negative 3x. Do it again. What times x is negative 3x? A negative 3. I get negative 3x minus 6. Multiply everything by a negative 1. They both become positive. X's add up to 0, and 6 minus 1 is 5. So what I've got for a horizontal or slant asymptote is y equals 2x minus 3 plus the remainder fraction 5 over x plus 2. And that's what's going to go in my horizontal asymptote spot. So y equals 2x minus 3 plus 5 over x plus 2. And since the fraction has an x on the bottom but not on the top, I'm going to disregard that when actually graphing. Now max and min you have to use your grapher for, and behavior will determine that in a moment. So let's take all the information that we have now, and we're going to place it on our graph. So let's start with our zeros. Uh, 1 half 0 and negative 1 0. And now our y-intercept, 0, negative 1 half. This is what I'm going to have to use an arrow on. Okay, now we're going to do asymptotes. x equals negative 2 is a vertical. And again, I'm going clear down my page. This is x equals negative 2. And then now I've got this line, y equals 2x minus 3, and I need to plot that. So you can do a t-chart or do it in your head if you're able to. If x is 0, y is 3, negative 3. If x is 3, 6 minus 3 is 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. And those are far enough apart. I think I can get a decent line. Again, I'm going to extend it a little further down than normal. I'm going way, way, way down. <laughs> All right. And your formula for that, y equals 2x minus 3 plus 5 over x plus 2. All right. So now let's do our graph. This one, I have enough points. I have three points. I can tell it's going to get infinitely close. Come down swoop around and get infinitely close without crossing the asymptote. 
I do, however, have a bunch of space down here. I know I don't have any vertical, any um, intercepts here, so I can't have a curve here because it would cross, and you can always find the zeros. So my curve is going to be somewhere down here, and this is where you might want a grapher to help you find some of the points that you're interested in. So I'm going to turn my grapher back on. I still have the y, the equation stored in the y equals. Um, there's my trace. So I'm going to direct input the points that I want. Um, let's try a negative 2, a negative 4, and a negative 6 and see what happens. So negative 2, direct input, enter. Oh, that's, oh, sorry, that's our asymptote. That came out blank. Uh, negative 4 is 1.4. Uh-oh, I need to look at my function here. Oh, I have the wrong function in this one. Okay, so I need to actually input this. Uh, okay, so open the top. 2x minus 1 goes in its own parentheses. x plus 1 goes in its own parentheses. Close the top, divided by, open the bottom. x plus 2, close the bottom. There we go. Now I can't see that other loop, so it's way the heck down there. So I'm going to go on window and I'm going to change my y minimum to like negative 35. And see, aha, there it is. There's the bottom curve. All right, now I can actually put in my values. So let's try a negative, how about a negative 3? Negative 3, enter, is negative 14. Negative 4 is negative 13.5. Negative 6 is negative 16.3. So yeah, it's way, way, way down there. Let's see if I can get down to 14. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14. 1, 2, 3. So that's my negative 3, negative 14, negative 4 is negative 13.5, and then negative 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 14, 15, 16.3. So that's enough curve, that's enough curve. So we can come infinitely close, it loops around, and then it gradually gets closer to that other line. Okay. So that is what our graph looks like. There were no graph holes because there were no factors that were the same. Again, we used long division to find the horizontal asymptote, the exact one, including the remainder fraction. That's new. We used a grapher to help us with the points. So this was all grapher work. That's new. And then again, sometimes on the top, you're going to have to solve it using the quadratic formula. So just be aware, quadratic formula is probably going to be used on your homework at least a few times. Now let's answer the questions. Minimum or maximum? Well, I don't have any minimums or maximums here, so none. Now let's do m behavior. So remember your limit notation. The limit of the function f of x as x approaches positive infinity will be a value. The limit of f of x as x approaches negative infinity will be a different value. That's your notation. That's what I want you to use. So you practice good notation. So as x goes infinitely to the right, y is going infinitely up. So positive infinity. As x is going infinitely to the left, the y's are going infinitely down, so that would be negative infinity. There is your end behavior. Vast majority of your functions will not have a maximum or a minimum. If they do, you need to use your grapher and use the max min function to actually figure out where it is. The vast majority of rational fractions, though, do not have an actual maximum or a minimum. They go infinitely in both directions. All right, that's all I have for you today. Feel free to re-watch this video if you forget how to do something. Otherwise, have a great afternoon.